we are on our FRQ topic on area and volume. So areas and volumes, we need to remember some key concepts. For area, we think that area is the integral of your top curve minus your bottom curve if you're in a dx, okay? Keep all x's. Left minus right if you have a dy. If you have a dy, your left and your right are going to have y's in them, no x's. So you have to take your equation they gave you and solve it for x to get y's. And your boundaries will have y boundaries. That's area. Top minus bottom, dx, right minus left, dy. Oh, goodness gracious. There's a typo on here. This should definitely be right minus left. Everybody make that correction on your paper. Holy smoke. Right minus left, always. Goodness. Okay. I should go and fix that right now, but that's okay. I'm going to have all you guys fix it. I've already made copies at school. Okay. Volumes. So whenever you see volume, when you're asked to find volume, you should be thinking, I need to integrate area, specifically integrate area of a cross section. Integrate area to get volume, okay? Integrate area to get volume. So there are two kind of types of these. I think of these as two types. One type is when they give you a cross section. There are times when they give you a cross section and they simply say, here is an expression for the area of a cross section and it is a random function, okay? That's fine. If they give you that, use that. Otherwise, they are going to tell you that your cross sections are squares or equilateral triangles or semicircles or isosceles right triangles with a leg on the base or an isosceles triangle with a hypotenuse on the base or is a rectangle. So in these situations, we need to have some area equations or area formulas known. So the area of our square is side squared. Side is always top minus bottom, assuming you have a dx. Right minus left if you have a dy. Almost always on these, they're going to be giving you dx's, but I have definitely seen them ask it with a dy, where dy was necessary. All right, square, side squared. Equilateral triangle square root of 3 over 4 times side squared. Semicircle with diameter on the base, pi over 8 side squared. Isosceles right triangle, leg on the base, 1 half s squared. Isosceles right triangle, hypotenuse on the base, 1 fourth s squared. It's half as much. The other one is when they give you a rectangle, and if they give you a rectangle, one of the dimensions is s, the other dimension is something that they give you. They might give you that this, that the height is 5, or 7, or pi, or they could tell you that the height is always 3 times s. In that case, it would be 3s here. Whatever it is, you write it there. S times whatever they give you, okay? All right, um, and again, if each cross sections are, if the cross sections are perpendicular to the y-axis, your S's will just be right minus left instead of top minus bottom, okay? Change to y boundaries. All right, so that's one type of volumes where they give you cross sections. The other type is when they tell you that it is a volume of revolution. Your region is being rotated or revolved about some axis. In that case, we set up this template. Okay, you can have either dx or dy, 
but you set up that template. In here is going to be your large radius, big R, and here's going to be your little radius, your little r. Big R is always the distance from the axis of revolution to the far side of your region. Little r is always the distance from the axis of revolution to the close side of your region. They will tell you what your axis of revolution is. Maybe y equals 2 or y equals negative 4. They will tell you your axis of revolution. Okay. So wherever your axis of revolution is, let's say our region is up here, from the axis of revolution to the far side of our region is our big R. Then you find that distance, top minus bottom. And then from the, ax from the axis of revolution to the close side of your region is your little r, top minus bottom, whatever that is. Put it in for your little r. Okay. All right, another thing that they can ask you, besides area and volume, another thing that I have seen them ask is they talk about the vertical distance between the two graphs, between two graphs, okay? Vertical distance is top minus bottom. That's your S that you have, okay? Or you could use it, or you could call it H for height, okay? So, when you're asked about vertical distance, that's just your top minus bottom. So if f is above g, it's f minus g, top minus bottom. All right, let's take a look at some problems. So we are going to start with the question from 2019. This one was no calculator. So in this question, they quite likely will be asking us if we know how to integrate. And do we know how to do volumes and areas? So the global average here was only a 3.2. All right, number seven. Let R be the region enclosed by the graphs of G and H. And the y-axis and the vertical line x equals 2. So here's one curve, here's the other curve, here's the y-axis, here's the vertical line, x is equal to 2. All right, so they, they show you the region and they describe the region. They always do that. Okay, which curve is which? We need to, be able, we need to know that. Which curve is which? One curve is a parabola and one curve is a cosine function. So the, there's no way that this is a parabola. So this must be the cosine function. So this is our g of x and this is our f of x. All right, part A, find the area of r. When I see area, I think integral top minus top, top minus bottom dx. And I can do top minus bottom because the same thing is always on top. The same thing is always on the bottom. So integral top is f of x. Oh, it's not f. They called it a, h, h of x. Okay, I'm so used to them calling things f. Alrighty, h of x minus g of x dx. What would the boundaries be? The far left x and the far right x, 0 and 2. Okay? All right. So we have, now, that's the integral that would give the area. We have to actually find it. So this is not a safe stop spot because we have not found the area. So this is definitely not a safe stop spot. So they are going to be asking, does this student know how to integrate? So we were going, we're going to have 6 minus 2 x minus 1 squared, that's my h of x, minus g of x, negative 2 plus 3 cosine of pi over 2x. Be careful there, you guys, because you are subtracting those two, 
So use parentheses or go ahead and distribute your negative through. Make sure that that's, in the end, it's going to be a minus. All right? Okay, I'm about to make that change happen. 6 minus 2, x minus 1 squared, plus 2 minus 3, cosine pi over 2x dx. I can combine the 6 and the 2 and make that an 8, and I'll do that in just a second. All right, so how to integrate this? We have a couple of options. Um, we can do a u sub on that. I will, in class, here's what I'm going to do, though. I'll, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. When we're integrating this thing, when we're integrating this thing, I will come off to the side and I'll say, everybody, what is the integral of just plain old cosine x? The integral of plain old cosine x is sine x plus c. Sine x plus c. So then I would say, what is the integral of cosine of 5x? What would that be? If we do a u sub, u would be 5x, du would be 5dx, divide by your 5. So we would be replacing dx with 1 fifth du and replacing 5x with u. So that would be 1 fifth integral cosine u du, which is 1 fifth cosine, I'm sorry, sine of u, 5x, plus c. So the integral of cosine of 5x is 1 fifth sine of 5x. So what is the integral of negative 3 cosine of pi over 2x? The integral of just that piece will be, we kept the sign, we keep the sign. The 3 I'm just going to write down. And what do we do with that pi over 2? We flip it and multiply. We divide it by the 5. We multiply by 1 fifth. Sine of pi over 2 x. Okay? All righty. This is going to be an 8. What's the integral of 8 dx? 8 x. Okay. Okay. Minus 2 times. All right. Uh, let's do a little u sub on that piece. What, what is the integral of this piece? Well, this is just an x minus 1. It's, I say just because what's the derivative of that? The derivative of that is just a 1. Yeah? So the derivative of x minus 1 is 1, which means this is a really quick and easy u sub. I could do a complete u sub and do that u, let u, you know, do it all out. But I'm going to just be using the power rule on that. So I'm going to have u to the third divided by 3, right? That's what I'm going to have there. So when I see a very simple u, I don't really do the u sub. All I do is do what I would do if I did do the u sub. Okay? So this thing is 8x minus 2 thirds x minus 1 cubed minus 6 over pi sine of pi over 2x. Okay? And we have boundaries. So no plus c because we have boundaries. Put 2 in for x. Put 2 in for x. Okay? 
subtract what you get when you put 0 in for x. 0 minus 2 thirds times negative 1 cubed minus 6 over pi sine of 0. That's a safe stop spot. Okay? Alrighty, and I'm looking at my answer key, and okay, alrighty. It's not the same that I have on my key, but you know what? I'm pretty, I just did it slightly different. What I did on my key was I actually foiled this out. I didn't use the power rule as it started. I foiled this out, and then I had a bunch of little terms, and so I had more terms down here, but I'm sure that my answer, I'm, feel, I'm feeling confident in that answer. I hope it's right. Okay, um, I'll check that after I get off this video and make sure that that was right. Otherwise, I will come and re re remake the video. Okay, how did they score this? So way back at the beginning, they gave one point for this integrand. So this integrand got us a point. Okay, one point for the antiderivative of this three, one point for this antiderivative right here and one point for all of the other antiderivatives. Okay, so one point for the other antiderivatives. And then one point for our answer. Four points. And it was worth four points. I think that was a little bit of work. It was definitely worth four points. All right, part B. Region R is the base of a solid. For the solid, at each x, the cross section perpendicular to the x-axis, that's a good thing, we get to keep our dx, has area, and here's one of those where we don't have to use one of our memorized area of a semicircle or whatever. All we have to do is use the area that they gave us. Find the volume of the solid. Integral of the area. That's it. That's it. Okay, what boundaries will we have? Still 0 to 2. Still 0 to 2. Okay, all right. Find the volume. This is the integral that gives the volume. We find the volume. So another one where they're asking me, do, does a student know how to integrate? All right, is this a natural law? Yes, it is. ln absolute value x plus 3. Is there a, a coefficient other than 1? No, there is not. The derivative of the bottom is 1. It's like we have 1 over 1 out front. All we need to do is apply our boundaries. ln of 5, be sure to put in the top boundary first. ln of 5 minus ln of three. Say stop. That's my kind of integral. Okay, what do they score this? One point for your integral, one point for your answer. So, so far we've had four, five, six, six points. I'm sure this, well, I know this last one was worth three. Okay, write but do not evaluate. Amen. I think we've, eval we've integrated enough, yes? Write but do not evaluate an integral expression that gives the volume of the solid generated when R is rotated about the horizontal line Y equals 6. So immediately, I think of my template. Integral pi times something squared minus pi times something squared. This is going to be my big R. This is going to be my little r. Okay? Let's go to our graph. We were revolving it around y equals 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Here is my axis of revolution. They will never make an axis of revolution go in the middle of a region. All right? So you don't have to worry about, gosh, does this come up above? No, they're not going to do that, okay? All right, from our axis of revolution to the far side of our region, 
That's our big R. Top minus bottom, uh, and that was our H, right? H minus G. Top minus, oh, not, not H, that's not H up there. Goodness gracious, that is 6. 6 minus G. Yeah? Okay, our little r goes from the axis of revolution to the close side of your region. It doesn't have to go far over the way I drew it there, but that is little r. That is 6 minus h. Top minus bottom, 6 minus h. Top minus bottom, 6 minus g. Okay? So, down here, big R is 6 minus G. Little r is 6 minus H. Our boundaries are still 0 to 2. We wrote but didn't evaluate. I'm looking, I'm rereading the question to make sure I didn't have to do anything else, and I didn't. That was it. So how did they get how did they score this? They gave one point for the limits and the constant. The constant is the pi. So one point if you have the limits correct and you included your pi in the appropriate spots or you could factor out that pi, either one. One point for the form of the integrand. Big R squared minus little r squared. The pi's we've already counted, so big R squared minus little r squared is the form of the integrand and then one point for the exact integrand. All righty, so that was no calculator. The next one I'm gonna do with you is one with a calculator. I needed to show you both. So this one was from 2022 and with a calculator. So I am going to grab my calculator. Haven't had to use it today, so I'm gonna grab it out of my backpack. And I've already got a bunch of stuff in there that I'm going to erase. I like to start on a nice screen. So get rid of everything else. Okay. Let f and g be the functions defined by. f is this natural log. g is this quartic or fourth degree polynomial. So I am going to put um, f in for y1 and g in for y2 being careful looking back at your equations making sure they match what you see all right don't know how many times I've been working with kids who Miss Murray, this I'm not getting your answers. I don't know what I don't I'm getting different answers from you. And I come back and I look and I'm like, your functions don't look anything like what the functions are that are on your page. They should match. They truly should match. Okay? Alright. So uh, the graphs of F and G shown in the figure on the right intersect at x equals negative 2 and x equals b, where b is positive. So I'm looking over here, and sure enough, they do intersect at x equals negative 2, and there is this other point out here that they tell me to name b. And I am positive I need to go find that b value. So I'm going to go find the b value, and I'm going to say what I'm doing to get it, all right? f of x is equal to g of x at x equals, okay, let's go find that intersection. I'm just going to go ahead and zoom 4, <clears throat> and you know what, I'm not going to play with that graph. I could play with it and make it look like this exactly because they gave me some uh, values on the axes, but you know what, I'm just going to, this gives me everything I need. So I see where the negative 2, where they intersect. I can go and find where they intersect over here. So second calc 5, enter, enter, and it looks like it's around 1. Oops, there we go. Remember that you know you are not done until 
you see the word intersection if you're using a TI-84, okay? It's not, you're not there until you see that word intersection. So I know that x is equal to 0.7819751 dot 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 is what they are calling B. Since they are calling it B, I will call it B as well. I'm going to go to my home screen, second quit, take that x value and store it in for B, alpha B. Hit enter, otherwise it won't be stored in there. So it should look like that and you should have that value. Okay, <clears throat> find the area of the region enclosed by the graphs. Area. As soon as I see area, I'm thinking of integral top minus bottom dx. So integral top, which curve was on top? Well, which curve is on top? This is clearly the quartic equation. This is the other one is the natural log equation. So f is on top. G is on the bottom. Okay. So area top minus bottom dx. What are our boundaries? Negative 2 and b. And we have a calculator to find, we have to find it. That's not a safe stop spot so far. We have to find it. So we're going to do integral, math 9, negative 2 to b. Our top curve is f, which I have stored in for y1. Our bottom curve is g, which I have stored in for y2. So the area is 3.603. This is what your calculator should look like. And you give at least three numbers after the decimal point. Feel free to give more, but you need to give at least three. If you don't give at least three, you will not get the answer point. And the answer point that year was worth a point, of course. The way they scored this was one point for the integrand one point for the limits of integration and one point for your answer. Question. Do you think that you would get the limits of integration point if you did not say how you got it? In general, that is absolutely correct. You do not get, you do not get credit for it unless you say what you did to get it. And that's true for any decimal. Any decimal, you must show how you got it in order to get credit for it. Okay? Part B. For negative 2 to B, let H be the vertical distance between F and G. There's that vertical distance I was talking about. So H and I will write that here. H is top minus bottom. That's the vertical distance. F minus G. Is H increasing or decreasing at X equals negative 5? Well, H increasing or decreasing relies on H prime. H is increasing if, if H prime is positive h is decreasing if h prime is negative. And there's my h. So all I need to do is I'm going to come in and put it's a little blurry. There we go. Okay, I'm going to put a y3 and I'm going to call that y1 minus y2. So there's my h. My h is now in y3. So if I want to know if h is decreasing or increasing, I need the, in the derivative at negative 0.5. Um, and I really don't need to give the value of it. I just need the sign of it. So math 8 with respect to x on my calculator 
that's looking awfully dim there. Let me try to brighten it up. Let's try to do it again. Okay. Let's try to do this again. Of my y3 at negative 0.5. and I get a negative value. I really don't care what the value is, I only care that it's negative. So I'm only going to say that that is less than zero. Therefore, h is decreasing at x equals negative 0.5. So we got 1.4 considers h prime at negative 0.5 for considering that or f prime of negative 0.5 minus g prime of negative 0.5 which it would have been had I not stored in that's what it would have looked like had I not stored my h in for my y3 and then 1.4 the answer uh, with reason So, so far, five points. We've got four more left to get on this problem. Part C. The region enclosed by the graphs of F and G is now the base of a solid. Cross sections of the solid taken perpendicular to the x-axis, that's a good thing, that's our dx, are squares. Cross sections are squares. Find the volume of the solid. Integral of area. The area will be the area of a square. Side squared. Okay. Side is top minus bottom. F minus G. Which is exactly what I have stored in for H. So if we want to, we could have written just H there. Squared. DX. From negative 2 to B. And that will equal okay, math 9, negative 2 to b of my y3. 3 point, oh, oh, I didn't square. Oops, still didn't square. Hit and enter too soon squared, I didn't do y, um, h squared, I only did h. So 5.340, at least three numbers after the decimal point. If you want to give more, give more. They only need, your answer needs to be accurate to those three numbers after the decimal point. All right, part D, last part. Oh, well, how much was this worth? This was worth two points. One point for the integrand one point for the answer. Okay, so part D. A vertical line in the xy plane travels from left to right along the base of the solid described in part C. The vertical line is moving at a constant rate of seven units per second. So this vertical line is moving at 7 units per second. So what is actually changing as this line is moving? Well, one, what are they describing here? The 7 units per second. That is our dx dt, because that's, that's the rate that x is moving. x is moving at 7 units per second. So they are giving us dx dt is 7 units per second. Find the rate of change of the area of the cross section. Find the rate of change of the area of the cross section above the vertical line with respect to time when the vertical line is at x equals negative 0.5. All right, area. Area is what we had in here. Area is you, we could write it as h squared or f minus g squared, either one. 
I think I'm going to write it as h squared. Okay? And we are looking for the rate that a is changing. So we want dA dt when x is at negative 0.5. That's what we want. Okay? So I need dA dt. I'm going to come in and take the integral, I'm uh, not the integral, the derivative of both sides with respect to t. So I get dA dt here, and that is equal to, all right, ah, how do we integrate this? And I will say, I do have a calculator in my hand. So I could let my calculator do this. I truly could. If I in for, oops, oh, okay. In for my y3, I could let, I could let y, not y3, y4. In for y4, I could let y4 be my a. If I put y3 squared in, I think I'll do that, y3 squared. Now, I just need to integrate not, not integrate, I keep saying that. Differentiate that with respect to t, right? So in my, at my home screen, okay, math 8 with respect to x, I have to do it with respect to x because y4 has x's in it. I would like to do it with respect to time, but I can't because we are only with respect to x in our calculator. So with respect to x of my y4 at that negative 0.5, so that would give me my answer with respect to x. In fact, I will write that down. Negative 1.32455 dot dot dot. That's with respect to x, but I want it with respect to time, so I need to multiply by dx dt, implicit differentiation. And that is the 7 that they gave me. So I'm multiplying this decimal times 7 for my answer. Okay? If you didn't like doing it like that, let me give you an alternative, okay? Let me give you an alternative. We have, hmm, let, let me get another piece, let me just do it. We have, let me get a scratch piece of paper here. So we have a is equal to h squared, yeah? a is equal to h squared, and we're taking the derivative of both sides with respect to time. So dA dt is, we're taking the derivative with respect to time of something with x's in it. So little chain rule here, 2 times h to the first times the derivative of the inside That's with respect to x, but we're taking it with respect to time, so we need to multiply by the derivative of that, and that is dx dt. It's a big chain rule right there. And now you plug in negative 0.5, so we would have in our calculator h is stored in for my y3, right? That was my y3. So I have, I think what I'll do is I will store negative 0.5 in for x, and then I will just, well, I don't know if I'll do it that way. Okay, anyway, two times h of x. So h of x, that's my y3, at negative 0.5. That's this piece. It's to the first power, so I'm not going to raise it to the first power. Okay? Times h prime at negative 0.5. Math 8 of y3 at negative 0.5. 
times 7. And we got the same answer. Okay? I'll show you that again. All right. So that's an alternative for that one. So this was worth two points, and one point was for that chain rule. So whichever way you're doing it, whether it's this way or the way I did it on my scratch paper, one point for the chain rule. The dA dx times dx dt. You needed to remember to multiply by dx dt. And then one point for the answer. Alrighty, that last part, that was a tough little question in part D. Um, the global average was about 3.34. Alright, so that is it for our two FRQs on area and volume.